Hello, everybody. This is Eric Nelson from the Pixel Guiden Retro Gaming Podcast. Um, hopefully, this video is going to be a little better in quality than my last one. I had some audio issues last time, which is embarrassing since I have a podcast. But this time, I'm using my actual podcasting equipment, so hopefully, the audio feed will be a lot better. Uh, I want to talk today about the uh, my Mister, my FPGA DE10 Nano computer that uh, I've had for a long time since uh, it first came out. Um, but I've it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like what people do with their PCs, putting it in different cases and putting in different video cards and this and that. My Mister seems to be constantly evolving. Um, and it's mainly the cases that it's in, the fans. I got a quieter fan. Um, you, basically, you can modify your Mister here and there a little bit to kind of customize and make it make it your own. But recently, I was on the Discord for the Amigos Retro Gaming Network, and Flack from Sprite Castle Podcast posted this very cool 3D printed. Um, case for your mister basically and its accessories like the like the hub um, or the io board basically you can put all that inside of this case and it makes it into a wedge computer which is like uh the commodore 64 or vic 20 you know this is this is the style of what a wedge computer is um basically it is a keyboard that contains the computer and i love wedge computers i, I i've lost count how many i have i think i uh, it's no joke. I think I have probably 30 different wedge computers at this point. But this one really intrigued me because I use my Mister for a lot more than just uh, playing video games. I, I connect to BBSs using it. Um, I edit a lot of scripts. I play a lot of text adventure style games on, on the, the 486 core. Um, I do a ton of that. Uh, so this really interested me. So I went ahead and basically exclaimed on the Discord that this is awesome. I would love to do something like this. Now, listen, I don't have a 3D printer. Uh, and this was a bigger print job. So, you know, I didn't want to just, I, I would imagine that if I tried to print it from one of those uh, online places, it might, it might have turned out okay. But it might have been a little pricey and it may not have come out quite the way I wanted to. But anyhow, uh, David Z on the Discord uh, ste stepped up and said, hey, I'm going to try to do a little test print job on this and see how it goes. And if you want it, um, I'll send you it. And I, I was more than happy to do that. So he did send it to me. And I will show you uh, a slideshow in a minute, a little of pictures of when I was putting it together. And you can see what exactly he sent me in the mail. And it's really cool. Um I am not going to take my Mr. apart on this video because as you put the screws in to put the Mr. and um, an I.O. board in, well, not I.O. board for me, I'll explain that in a minute, but I put the hub in there. The more you unscrew and screw the the case together, the, the holes are going to wear out because, you know, it, it is a 3D print job. These aren't uh, reinforced screw holes, so... They will wear out over time, so I'm only going to open this when I really, really have to. But I did take pictures along the way to show how I did the build. And I'll share those with you. And then if you have any questions and you want to build one yourself, let me know. It was very easy. I modified mine quite a bit. Um, in fact, in the link on this YouTube video, I will show you the website that I used, at the, the, the 3D print job, in case you wanted to try to print this out yourself or have someone print it for you. Um, but anyway, let me I'll, let me show it to you real quick. This is the wedge, the Mister Wedge, and this, um, like I said, was printed by David Z. Um, I will go over some of the ports on there now. This assumes in the, in the print job that you are going to print, you are going to install three things the DE10 Nano itself, the FPGA computer. Second is a USB hub, which I didn't have. I never, I always use an external hub, which you can just plug into the mister. I didn't have one, so I had to order one for this project, and, and I did. And the second is an I.O. board. Now, I do have an old I.O. board. Um, it was a proprietary one by um, 
from cbmstuff.com, Jim Drew. Um, I had that I.O. board. I used it for many, like probably over a year. I realized I never used it for anything. It, it has a VG, it had a VGA port on it, it had a second SD card slot, um, had the three buttons for doing various things. I never used that at all because you don't need the buttons on a mister. You can use F12 in any of the ports and get along just fine. So I quickly realized I didn't use the IO board. So I just, if it's if I'm not using it, why draw the additional power for it? I, I basically took it out of my mix. I don't use it anymore. But anyway, like I was saying, the three things inside of this thing are, are um, the hub, the IO board, and the mister. So mine is a little modified. I didn't put an IO board back into this, but I did put the hub in. And in my pictures in the slideshow coming up, I'll show them to you. But let me show you. I'll show this to you from all angles. So obviously, this is the keyboard. Now, this is a mechanical keyboard that you can get off of Amazon. The link to the exact product is in uh, the link to the 3D print job. It is a small, obviously it doesn't have a numpad on it. It is a smaller, but it is a mechanical keyboard, so it feels really nice. Um, and this design, I, I will have to say, the design for this is really cool. The keyboard slides right into these grooves, and then when you put this top piece on, it holds it in place. I mean, this the keyboard cannot fall out of this and it is solid. Um, so there is that. So let's look at this side now. So I'm gonna hold this up. This is, you can see I still have some sanding to do. I'm not quite done with this. I was so excited, I just, I didn't do all the detail work, but I am gonna sand these out. This is the side for the IO hub in, or the, the USB hub. And you can see that there is a uh, one USB port there, but if you go to the back, there are the three USB, uh, I'm on the wrong side here, the three USB ports for the uh, for the hub. Now up here would be additional ports for other boards that you might get, like the I.O. board or whatever. I didn't install the I.O. board. Uh, if you look down in that port right in the middle, that is a network card right here. That is a network port for the mister. And then if we look on this side, this is where the HDMI plugs in, the main power goes here. Um, and then that is a USB port. Um, I don't use the USB port for anything right now. But you can see there are holes that I don't use, like up here on the top. And those are mainly for the I.O. board, um, which they'll just be open ports to allow air ventilation in here. I do have a fan on my mister in here. If we look at the bottom, you can see that the 3D print job, that's the back of the keyboard on this part. Um, this right here is the DE10 Nano. This is the hub on this side. They screw right into the case uh, using M3 screws, which you can get on Amazon. Uh, they went in nice and neat, no problems at all. A couple of them were a little hard to reach because they were aligned to the back of the case. Now, David did print me feet, but I decided to use these rubber feet because when I set, there is a fan on this, so when I set it down on a, on a desk, I wanted to make sure there was no vibration and it didn't move around um, while I'm gaming or typing on it. So I bought these little rubber feet. I think I got them at Target or something. So I mean, they're really easy to find, really easy to get. You see some cables in there for the keyboard. Um, now, the, one thing I found a little weird. So uh, this hub is called the 2. 1, version 2.1. There is a version one of the hub. And when you do print jobs, you can print different ones for different hubs um, and, and where these things align in the slots. Um, this aligned just fine. I did have to drill an additional hole, which I will show you to do. Uh, you have to do power to the hub. Now, someday I might modify this to just route internally another power connector and then plug it into the, a regular D10. So I only need one power cord. Cody kind of mentioned that when I showed this to him. Um, I don't mind plugging into two different power cords. It doesn't bother me. So I may leave it at that. Um, one thing David Z did print out, see there, there are holes for the buttons for, for the mister. You know, there is a button that takes you to the OSD menu so that you can pick different cores. And then there are other buttons, which I gotta be honest with you, I really don't even know what they do because I, I've never once used them. You don't have to, you can use F12. Um, David Z did print these really cool orange buttons because I love the color orange. I like to highlight, and I thought a black with the orange highlights would look really cool. And I'm still 
contemplating doing that. It's easier to put buttons in when you use the I.O. board because they sell these little kits with a wiring harness that plugs into the I.O. board and then you can route, clip off the end on those wires and then route them to your buttons. But then you still have to figure out how you're gonna actuate those buttons with springs or whatever in these holes. And then if you look even closer, there are holes for, I'm covering it with my finger, LEDs on the side here. So you could do things for drive activity, power, things like that. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, I probably will someday. But like I said, this is gonna be a continuing work in progress, uh, but I really was just excited to get it up and running. Now, if you look in that USB hub, there are still ports in the back of the USB hub right in here. And in there, I have plugged, obviously, the keyboard. The mechanical keyboard is in one plug. The other one is the mouse that I use on a day-to-day -day basis with this thing. It's a wireless mouse. All the microcomputer cores that support mice support that. And that is where that is. I put it inside the case because I'm never going to remove it because I'm always going to need a mouse. So that is in there. Now, in the back of here, on the back of these is I can plug in. the little joystick dongles, which I have been totally in love lately with my 8-bit Doe arcade stick. And that has that 2.4 gigahertz transceiver, which is right here, which is plugs in here. So literally I just put this on my desk, plug that in, boom, I got the arcade stick. Happy as a clam. So that is that. So let me, so that is that. I wanna show, show you this um, turned on. So I'll go through the slideshow and show you some of the, some during the building process, I took a few snapshots. Um, so I'll show you those. And then I'll show it to you turned on because this mechanical keyboard does have an internal light on it. And I think it looks really cool when it's lit up. Uh, so let's see if I can use OBS right here and show you this slideshow. So here we go. Hopefully. There we go. Took me a minute to figure that out. So this was what came in the mail. Um, actually, I want to go back there. So this is what came in the mail. This right here is the main chassis. And then you can see in the top of that picture is uh, the lid that goes on top and holds the keyboard in and all together. And then you just mount those, um, mount the, uh, Mr. and the IO or and the hub inside inside of that. So and I'll, I'll show you through there here. So this is where the Mr. plugs in. So you can see the hub is on the left hand side. The DE10 is on the right. I have a little fan plate that usually goes where the IO board goes. The IO board usually contains your fan as well. So I just have like this this plate that you can just order from anywhere that sells Mr. accessories. Um, so that you can keep a fan in there. There is a lot of people that say you don't really need to run a fan. Um, I feel a lot better when there is because the thing gets really hot. So I did have to drill a hole in the side um, to route another power cord. That was the only modification I needed to make to the case. I suppose that if you had the right hub version, you wouldn't really need to do that. So you probably won't need to do a lot of modifying if you go this route. This is the thing with the keyboard slid in. You can see it just slides right down in the front of that and then that's it lit up when I was doing my testing. The hub is on the left and the DE10 is on the right. And then this is it with the lid on. Once you screw that lid on, it holds that keyboard in place. It can't move and it does not move left and right, up and down. It is solid inside of there. I, I was actually, one of the coolest things about this project was I, I didn't want some kind of sloppy, um, you know, thing to put together and or because uh, I really plan on using this a lot. And this thing is rock solid once you screw it all pieces. It was very, um, the dimensions were well engineered, whoever designed this 3D print case, which I reached out to the guy to uh, try to donate to him. The guy, uh, now David Z on Discord is the one who printed this for me, but the guy who made it, I don't remember his name. Um, you, you can see it on the website and I tried to click the link to tip him to donate some money, but the website came back and said, hey, this guy doesn't isn't set up to receive donations, so. I did try to do the right thing and just haven't gotten there yet. So this is the case from a different angle, just to show you the slant for the 
the keyboard and, and the ergonomics on that. Again, David Z did a fantastic job of printing this out. I mean, uh, it it barely needed any cleanup, really. Uh, I did clean it up a little. I still have a little more to do, but it, it it's, it's beautiful. He did a really, really great job. So anyway, let me move that slideshow. So here is the next slideshow that shows it powered on. So that you can see the Mr. Core. This is during my testing. I hadn't put the top lid on because I wanted to make sure everything worked. Uh, but that is the Mr. Menu that shows you all of your cores. And if I go to the next, I think the next slide here, let me see here. I think that's it. I can't seem to get to my other picture. I did have one with the Amiga core running. Um, let me see if I can quickly get that going here. Yeah, that should be in there. So let me see why it's not in there. There it is. I don't know why that didn't come up the first time I clicked it, but there we go. So that is the Amiga core running with the lid closed on the wedge. Uh, that's basically what it looks like now with, with it just running. You can see there are power cords and just HDMI cord. There's a network cord sometimes plugged in the back when I need to do updates or connect to BBSs. Uh, but otherwise, it's a pretty self-contained, easy to connect and set up. And it just works amazingly well. So I'm very happy with the project. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this is what I used to have my Mr. in. So if you if you mainly just play games with your Mr., um, you really don't need to have the wedge, obviously. I just do. I found myself using it for a lot of typing. Um, this was the original little 3D printed box that the Mr. sat in. And then if you had an IO board, it sat on the top. Uh, I did not have a hub at the time. Like I said, I used a little external hub. But this was this was a nice little case. This served me for a very long time. And, uh, you know, if, if I ever get tired of this, I can always put this back in there. This is a great little case. Anyway, that's the Mr. Wedge project. I think if I do any future videos for game playing, I may use my Mr. Wedge. So you'll see it in action. Uh, probably in a week or two, I'll probably try to do um, a stream where... I plug this in and I'll try to put a camera on the wedge itself so people can see it all lit up and in motion and then maybe play some games on it and show everybody how that goes. But anyway, that's it. So if you have any questions again, uh, ask them in the Amigos Discord or you can do that in, the, in this YouTube video and I'll try to answer them. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video.